I was very surprised by the results of this latest experiment. I took two containers, one clear, one opaque, and I grew lettuce. And as you might expect, in the clear container, I also grew algae. Now, when you're going shopping for a hydroponic setup, you normally don't reach for the clear container because you will also get algae. I wanted to see what would happen if I grew heads of lettuce in an algae swampy soup of nutrients and water. I just wanted to see what would happen. The effects of algae in a hydroponic system are pretty well known. They've been well researched. When algae grows, it consumes some of the nutrients, which does deprive the plant a little bit, but not as much as you might think. The plant's still going to do fine. Like lettuce doesn't really need that much. Depending on your plant, it may or may not affect it. Um, as algae grows, it can produce beneficial oxygen in the water. Sometimes you'll see oxygen bubbles coming off of the algae that's growing, so that's a good thing. But as the algae dies and decomposes, it sucks that oxygen back out of the water. And since algae has a much shorter lifespan, it's probably going to deprive the plant of the oxygen that it needs. Um, also, as it breaks down, it can produce a toxin as a side effect, which feeds bad bacteria. So you've got an oxygen-deprived environment, plus food for bad bacteria, which means root rot. So that's the known side effects of algae. There's some others, but those are the main ones. Oh, the biggest one, it's gross. It's slimy, it clogs up your ducts, it clogs up your air stones, it just makes a mess of everything. So it's just kind of a mess. Um, and those are the main downsides to algae in a hydroponic setup. Two containers, roughly the same size. The opaque one is, is a little bit bigger, but I don't think that affected anything. Um, one was four gallons, one was three gallons. I put the same amount of nutrients in so that the PPMs were about the same. We were about 650 in each container, which is more than enough for lettuce. It's low if you're growing tomatoes or something else, but it's more than enough for lettuce. And I used the General Hydroponics three-part series with the mild vegetative dosage, which, like I said, ended up in about 650 parts per million. The setup is as follows. I took a clear container, I drilled holes in it, I put the net cups in, hydrogen, seeds and an air stone and same with the opaque container i did had one existing so i just used one i had six holes in it. i plugged two of them four of them up so i had two holes so i had two very similar setups going at the same time and it was a dwc ish i'm going to call it a dwc ish or crack key ish right like i had an air stone in there but i didn't dump the water out like you would with the dwc culture and i had it wasn't quite cracky because i had an air stone so i'll say dwc ish if that makes sense one more thing, and then we'll get back to the results. When you're growing almost in any hydroponic setup, you're going to get a little bit of algae, and that's okay. I'll get it oftentimes on the top of the rock wool when the seedlings are just coming out. I'll get it on the top of the hydrogen in an ebb and flow system. I'll get it around the t anywhere where the light is hitting and there's water, right? Where it's wet and the light is hitting, I get a little bit of algae. It's not usually a problem. It doesn't gum up my system. It's not clogging any emitters. It's not clogging the air stone. It's not doing anything, having any negative side effects. So that algae is just fine. If you do get algae that you think you need to kill or get rid of, and you can't just dump the water out, like I'm growing in these small containers back here. If I wanted to, I could just dump the water out, wash it, put it back in, and I'd have a, just a, a fine setup. If you have a system wherein you think you need to kill the algae that's there, hydrogen peroxide is able to do the job. Uh, from what I read, 50 parts per million will kill algae in a hydroponic setup. Um, it will also kill small plants. So you'll have to decide for yourself if it's worth it. If you've got big plants and they're more mature, they'll probably survive. I don't know. Do your own research. I haven't tried that, but that's what I read. That's enough. Let's get back to the results and I'll show you why I was so surprised. Now, just looking at this, don't cheat. Can you tell which plant is growing in the clear container and which plant is growing in the opaque container? I'll show you the differences here. First, this, this one is the one growing in the algae and this is the one growing in the opaque container. So let's take a look at the leaves. Here we have in the opaque container, this plant, two very nice heads of lettuce. Uh, I have a little bit of tip burn on here. I'm not quite sure why. Sometimes when plants get more mature, they transpire water faster and they don't quite get the nutrients they need to the end of the leaves, which will cause tip burn. There's, I don't have any tip burn on the back, so it could be maybe a heat thing. Maybe the light was closer in the front. Um, other than that, these are fairly nice pieces of lettuce. I don't have any problems with anything here. No fungus, no no diseases, nothing really wrong here. All right, as far as the roots are concerned, let's get in there. Take a look at those. They have nice, clean, white roots, giant root mass on the front one. The back one's kind of weak, but it doesn't seem to be affecting anything. Like, the lettuce is just fine back there, so I'm not too concerned about the lack of a root mass on that one. And then the air stone and the nutrients in the water kind of make it kind of a pink color. Now here's what was most surprising about the algae one. This plant in the back is the best one. 
is the biggest. It doesn't have any root. It doesn't have any tip burn. It doesn't have any problems to it. This plant back here is just massive and beautiful. In the front here is a different story. We have this plant right here. You can see it's kind of bursted out of this kind of weird necrotic tip burned thing. And it's just this kind of stubby plant, this narrow, weird looking plant, right? This one had some root problems, and I'll show you those in just a minute. And it's only recently that this is kind of blasted out here. Until just recently, this was just all clumped up in a ball of tip burn, and it couldn't quite make out, couldn't quite make it out. And I think the answer lies in these roots. Look at these roots. They're all covered in algae. I think that this algae actually kind of gummed these roots up and prevented them from doing what they need to do, which is absorb nutrients. The algae didn't grow in the water. It grew on anything it could cling to. Uh, so I don't have like free floating swarms of algae like sometimes you see in a lake, but I have algae growing on anything it, it could cling to. And as the water levels dropped, it grew on these roots. And as it did, this plant couldn't get the nutrients it needed. This is my theory. And it got this tip burn. And then I filled the water back up and this was underwater and it started growing new roots, which is when this part kind of burst free. Now, if you look at the root mass of the one in the back, this one is massive. It's just a massive root mass. And it's a nice clean white root mass for the most part. It either didn't get quite as much light back there in the water, in the reservoir, because most of the light's coming from the front and not so much from the back. So these roots were protected from the algae, but it's just a massive root mass and it's a big, beautiful head of lettuce. You can see the algae all on the sides and on the air stone and on the bottom of the container and how it's just kind of a gunky mess. For the most part, this head of lettuce with its slimy green roots, uh, just kind of didn't do too well. So conclusions. Can algae negatively affect the plant growth? Yes, in all the ways we discussed. Plus, it can grow on the roots and kind of stunt the plant. It may not let the plant grow the way that it should. Like, this thing is just kind of stunted and weird, and it's got sick green roots on it, and just didn't do well. Meanwhile, the one in the back, where the roots were not actually, the algae didn't actually grow on the roots, it thrived. So I think that is all I have to say about this. Leave your comments below if you liked it. Uh, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, like Geraldine Dunn says, give it a thumbs down twice. Share it with a friend. I uh, hope you found it interesting and insightful, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.